ਮਿਸਿਸਾਗਾ ਦੇ ਮਾਲਟਨ ਤੋਂ ਐਮਪੀ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਬੈਂਸ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਹੀ ਐਲਾਨ ਕਰ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਹੁਣ ਅਗਲੀ ਵਾਰ ਉਹ ਚੋਣਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੜਨਗੇ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਰਾਜਨੀਤੀ ਤੋਂ ਸੰਨਿਆਸ ਲੈ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਕੱਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣਾ ਆਖਰੀ ਭਾਸ਼ਣ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਰਾਜਸਥਾਨ ਦੇ ਇੱਕ ਪਿੰਡ ਤੋਂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਆਏ ਸੀ 1970 ਦੇ ਨੇੜੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਇੱਥੇ ਆਏ ਸੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਿਹਨਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਾਂ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਪੂਰੀ ਰਾਤ ਇੱਕ ਕੁਕੀ ਫੈਕਟਰੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਭਰਾ ਨੂੰ ਤਿਆਰ ਕਰਕੇ ਸਕੂਲ ਭੇਜਦੇ ਸੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਖਾਸ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਕਾਫੀ ਮਿਹਨਤ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਨੇ ਕੈਬਨਿਟ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਅਲਮਾਰੀਆਂ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਦਾ ਕੰਮ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਸਮੇਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੋਚਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਦਾ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੀ ਕੈਬਨਿਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਬਣਨਗੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਇਹੋ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਹੈ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਨੂੰ ਮੌਕਾ ਮਿਲਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਨਾਬ ਬਲਤੇਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਢਿੱਲੋਂ ਦਾ ਇਸ ਮੌਕੇ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਉਦਾਹਰਣ ਵੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਕਿ जो पहले ਆਰਸੀਐਮਪੀ ਅਧਿਕਾਰੀ ਬਣੇ ਸਨ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਦਸਤਾਰ ਸਜਾ ਕੇ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਦੀ ਨੌਕਰੀ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੀਤੀ ਸੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਕਈ ਹੋਰ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਵੱਧ ਕੇ ਵੱਡੇ ਅਹੁਦਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਨੇ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਬੈਂਸ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਉਦਾਹਰਣਾਂ ਸਾਂਝੀਆਂ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਪਤਨੀ ਸਮੇਤ ਦੋਵੇਂ ਬੇਟੀਆਂ ਨਾਨਕੀ ਤੇ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਤੰਦਾ ਸੇ ਕਿ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਬੈਂਸ 6 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ 5 ਵਾਰ ਲੋਕ ਸਭਾ ਚੋਣਾਂ ਜਿੱਤ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ 5 ਵਾਰ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੇ ਐਮਪੀ ਬਣ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਮੌਜੂਦਾ ਐਮਪੀ ਵੀ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਹੁਣ ਅੱਗੇ ਤੋਂ ਚੋਣਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਲੜਨ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਐਲਾਨ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਪ੍ਰਧਾਨ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਜਸਟਿਨ ਟਰੂਡੋ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਲੋਕ ਸਭਾ ਮੈਂਬਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਅਗਲੀ ਵਾਰ ਚੋਣਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਲੜਨ ਦਾ ਐਲਾਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਬੈਂਸ ਵੀ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਨੇ ਪ੍ਰਧਾਨ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਜਸਟਿਨ ਟਰੂਡੋ ਨੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਖਾਸ ਟਵੀਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਤੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਓਵਰ ਦ ਇਅਰਸ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਅਰਿਜ਼ਨ ਟੂ ਸਪੀਕ ਔਨ ਮੈਨੀ ਟਾਈਮਲੀ ਟੌਪਿਕਸ ਐਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੈਸਿੰਗ ਇਸ਼ੂਸ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਿੰਗ ਦ ਪੈਂਡੈਮਿਕ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਡੀਲਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਬਟ ਟੁਡੇ ਇਸ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ today will be the last time i address this house i'd like to share some reflections on my time in politics and what i've learned along the way as the member of parliament for mississauga malton i begin by expressing how grateful i am to have had the opportunity to serve my vibrant community and this beautiful beautiful country for over 13 years first i want to thank the people of brampton and mississauga who put their faith in me as their federal representative on five separate occasions. I've tried to be worthy of their trust and never ever took it for granted. As honorable members know, all too well, politics is something that we don't do alone. It's a team sport, and I've been blessed with fantastic teammates throughout my career. I thank my colleagues in this house for your friendship and your guidance. My hard working staff and our top tier public servants. And the relentless commitment shown by my riding association and the hundreds of volunteers who donate their time to make this country a better place. I owe you more than I can express. I would like to especially thank the right honorable prime minister for his confidence and friendship over the years. Serving as a member of your cabinet has been an honor of a lifetime. I am pleased to have had such a direct role in crafting economic policies and programs for all Canadians. Politics is not easy on families. And I want to single out my amazing, beautiful wife Bram and my remarkable daughters Nanki and Kirpa. for all the sacrifices that they have made to make my service possible. Thank you very much.
Chuck bought on PS, spoke very little English, and had five dollars to his name. But he came here for better economic opportunities. In a few years, my father learned carpentry from an Italian Canadian cabinet maker who called him Vincenzo, which he thought sounded better than Belvinder. And my father wore that handle as a badge of honor. My mother worked the night shift at a cookie factory so that she could be home each morning to help make breakfast for my brother Herjot and I and help us tie our patkas, which is a head covering for young, sick kids. And she knew how important it was for me to play sports, and I love sports. And to do so confidently, I needed my patkas tied well. So she worked all night, but always made it at home, in time so that I could go to school feeling sure and confident about myself. They both worked hard, did well, and my father eventually bought a cabinet company of his own and moved the family from Jane and Finch to Brampton. Even with that success, success, I don't think he ever expected our family to go from cabinet makers to sitting at the cabinet table, only in Canada. <laughs> my parents instilled in me at an early age the understanding that this country has been so good to us, and therefore we must give back to Canada. It was our responsibility to help create the same opportunities for others. And that's not to say, Mr. Speaker, that I didn't face my share of challenges. Looking a bit different as a kid, I had my share of unwelcome remarks and teasing, but I grew up in the era of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. For me, a pivotal moment was the Boltage Singh Dillon case, where an observant Sikh RCMP officer was granted the right to wear his turban with his uniform. There was controversy, for sure, but for a young Sikh boy, the message I heard was that you belong and you can play a meaningful role in our institutions. Looking back, I can see that these changes were the realizations of an inclusive and multicultural society. That was the hard-fought vision of former Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau and many others. It showed a gradual willingness to accept, evolve, and celebrate. When I decided to run for office, I chose the party of the Charter, the Liberal Party as my political family. But even there, I encountered those who felt I should hide my identity. Don't put your picture in the brochure, one very senior party voice told me. At that moment, I was taken aback, but I just took it in and stayed silent. However, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to report that my silence didn't last too long. And not only did I not take that advice, but I decided to put my picture in every single brochure. <laughs> and, and, and my view was that if I was going to be on the ballot, I wanted people to know the person they were putting their faith into. I wasn't going to hide my identity or conceal who I was. And by the way, in case you were wondering, I won the first election with 57% of the vote, the widest margin in the region of Peel. <laughs> and it wasn't the first time I'd stand up for equality, and it wouldn't be the last. Soon after my first election, the same-sex marriage debate tested my commitment to stand up. There were many of my constituents who didn't agree with same-sex marriage. But to me, the choice was clear. You love who you love, and you can't decide what rights go to which people. End of story. I took a lot of flack for that position, but I'm proud that I made it. For someone who's always looked different, I knew there was no other option. That's also how I defended it to those who would complain about their own discrimination in one breath while advocating discrimination against others in the next. When I was appointed the Minister of Industry, I was acutely aware that I was the first person of color to hold that role. And I was determined, absolutely determined, to leave the door open wider for others. While there were many initiatives we took to create jobs and accelerate science and innovation, 
I am most proud of speaking up for equality and equity amongst decision makers. I was proud to introduce the 50-30 challenge. And this initiative asked that organizations in the private and public sector aspire to two goals, gender parity on Canadian boards and among senior management, and significant representation, at least 30% amongst those same leaders representing underrepresented groups, such as black Canadians, persons living with disabilities, LGBTQ2S, and our First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. To date, more than 1,000 Canadian organizations have taken up the challenge to move the underrepresented into positions of economic influence and leadership. While things are objectively better in this country for those marked as different, we still have a long journey ahead of us. I, like many Canadians, was heartbroken when I heard of the tragic news about the 215 children found at a former residential school in Kamloops. It should remind all of us that there are still those on the outside looking in and that Canada is very much a work in progress and we have much to do on reconciliation. As we're dealing with this historic tragedy, we were horrified to see in London, Ontario, that hate is alive and well. Hate is poisonous and it's a thing that lashes out at those whose only crime is being different. I also wear my faith for the world to see, and that could have been my family. While I know there is not a person in this house who wouldn't condemn these crimes, we must remember that every time we stoke division, the seeds of hate are planted and watered. And the country looks to us in these moments, but we, and what we say and what we do in between these moments has just as much impact. En fait, il y a ceux qui... In fact, there are those in this country who still claim to serve public interest and in passing laws on discrimination and putting Canadians, pitting Canadians against each other. This approach will end up by failing as it always has. But we must make our leaders understand that this is not something we will tolerate in today's Canada. It is our diversity that is our strength. And to quote once again the former Prime Minister, a society that focuses on uniformity is a society that creates intolerance and hate. As you know, I requested an additional 30 seconds to make this final remark here, so thank you for your indulgence. But I'm tremendously optimistic for the future. I see that my daughter's generation already thinks very differently about these challenges, and it brings me hope. Politics has taught me that progress is not linear. It happens when enough good people fight long enough and hard enough to make things right. And the most important lessons are the ones that you learn again and again. And not surprisingly, the advice I have for my daughters, despite all my experiences, boils down to what my parents taught me. Be thankful for all that you've been given and return the favor by lifting others up. Believe in yourself, but remember that it isn't all about you. Be kind to others and understand that those without kindness are the ones who need it the most. And finally, in politics as in life, try to leave things a little better than you found them. I hope, colleagues, that in our service, we left our community and country better off for our efforts. And I am confident that those who sit in this chamber and those who will fill these seats long after we are gone will do the same. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.